a question says, if I apostatized, do I need to take ghusl and say the shahada to enter Islam again? If a person commits apostasy and he exits the fold of Islam, is he obliged when saying the shahada to have a ghusl to uplift the major ritual impurity or not? First of all, not everything that crosses your mind takes you out of the fold of Islam. And this is a very important point all of you should pay attention to. Why? Because I give a lot of counseling sessions for such people. And they come to me and say, Sheikh, I had a thought crossing my mind. I smiled. So am I out of the fold of Islam? Sheikh, somebody said something and I shook my head. So I think I left the fold of Islam. So I take my shahada and make ghusl. And they do this 10, 15 times a day. This type of hardship is Satan driven. And it would end with you leaving the fold of Islam for real because you'll reach a level where you are so distressed and anxious that you say out of pure desperation, I've had it. If I'm going to hell, might as well leave Islam, leave prayer, leave every, everything and live like a kafir. And this is to shaitan, mission accomplished. So first of all, you have to identify whether what you're doing takes you out of the fold of Islam or not. And most likely it, it, it doesn't. But you need to sit with someone who tells you this and puts some sense into your head and opens your eyes. You can find this in your local masjid. You can find this when your local sheikh or someone who's wise and knowledgeable you trust. And they can do this, but you have to get this fixed. Secondly, the ruling on taking ghusl when accepting Islam is an issue of dispute. The majority say you don't have to. However, the Maliki and the Hanbali school of thought say that it is mandatory. Due to the incident of Thumam ibn Athal, may Allah be pleased with him, when he accepted Islam after being tied to a pillar in the masjid for three or four days, the Prophet ordered his companions to go and take him so that he could have ghusl and come back. And also for the hadith of Qais ibn Asim, may Allah be pleased with him, where he told him to have a ghusl. But the other scholars, the Shafi'i and the Hanafi schools of thought, and the vast majority, say that it is not mandatory, it is highly recommended. Why? They say because hundreds and thousands of people accepted Islam at the time of the Prophet and it was never reported that he ordered them to perform ghusl. The Maliki and the Hanbali say, yes, but a kafir accepting Islam, most likely he would be in the state of major ritual impurity, Janaba. They don't perform ghusl. So this is by default, the, the most likely. So it would be only logical to order them to make ghusl. To counter this, we may say that, well, it's a major ritual impurity. It's a ritual, not physical. So by accepting Islam, this cleanses the whole thing and purifies them from a ritual impurity, not of a physical impurity. If we can see a physical impurity, it has to be washed off. But a ritual impurity, they should be fine with that. And the evidence is that the vast majority of Muslims, if not all of the Muslims, were not reported to us that they were ordered to make ghusl. Of course, to be safe rather than sorry, performing ghusl would be the safest opinion. But I wouldn't say that it is mandatory. Thirdly, this applies to original kafirs, not to one with OCD who keeps on thinking 10 times or 15 times a day that he invalidated his Islam and Allah knows best.